Many years of explosives manufacturing experience are utilized to train employees in safe, efficient, quality production. This film is one of a series to show some of the operations and methods incorporated for safe production of our products. We will follow the buses to the F-Line roll area for a complete tour of the area. F-Line is the production area responsible for blending, rolling, and pressing the propellant. Lead, a chemical modifier, is weighed to the required amount prior to being added to N5 paste at the blending operation to follow. Due to the toxic characteristic of this material, special safety precautions are taken. All personnel working in the lead weighhouse are required to wear dust respirators at all times and are furnished a complete change of clothing twice during each shift. Strict periodic physical checkups conducted by our medical department further safeguard the welfare of these employees. Rubber gloves are worn at all times. When a hazard cannot be eliminated, Hercules employs every known method to protect the employee from that hazard. N5 paste is delivered from the paste area by closed powder trucks to the blender rest house. Fire symbol 4, displayed on the powder truck, indicates at a glance that should a fire occur, the possibility exists it will explode rather than remain a fire. In this event, the fire would not be fought and all personnel would evacuate to a minimum of 1,000 feet. All powder trucks carry wheel chocks, which are placed under the back wheels when parked. personnel remove paste from the rest house as needed and transport it to the charging floor in the blender. As the operator charges the blender, dry chemical modifiers are added. Paste is dumped from bags down a chute into a tumbling barrel which resembles a large cement mixer. When the required amount of blending is reached, the blender barrel is reversed and the paste is dumped into plastic tubs and placed on a conveyor for loading on jeep trains. Quality control personnel collect samples at the blender operation to check moisture content at this stage of the processing. Respirators are also worn by blender personnel and periodic medical checkups are required. transported in plastic tubs by jeep train to the mechanized roll facility. The mechanized roll unit is unique in that it is fully automated and accomplishes with four people what three conventional roll houses and one carpet roll house does with 18. All operations are remote controlled. As the paste is unloaded at the mechanized roll, 
the paste tubs are placed on an elevator, which elevates them to a gravity feed conveyor to the loading bay. The operator then places the tub on a remote control dumping mechanism. The paste is then dumped into the feed hopper. The paste is then fed out and weighed automatically. It is then conveyed through a metal detector and through a dielectric heater which preheats it before it's placed in another automatic dumper onto the pre-roll mill. Some of the scenes in this film appear darker than others as all scenes are of actual operations and special lighting could not be used. cooks the paste, removing moisture, and colloids the material into a sheet which is very similar in appearance to a plastic sheet. The sheet is cut off by an automatic knife and then delivered by conveyor to the final mill. The final mill rolls the material into a single strip which passes through a cooling tank and an air drive. It is then automatically fed into a carpet roll machine that winds the strip into a large roll. The operating bay allows monitoring by closed circuit television. From this control panel, the operator views and controls the entire mechanized roll operation by remote control. This facility was designed by Hercules engineers and was constructed during the Korean conflict and is the only facility of its type in existence. All operating personnel wear flame retardant coveralls, safety glasses, and conductive safety shoes. This is a safety precaution for all operators in this department. In addition, all operating buildings are equipped with fast-acting deluge sprinklers. Although the mechanized roll facility is the latest design of remote-controlled processing, most of the production in the roll area is still accomplished by the conventional roll house operation. Again, paste from the blender is delivered to the roll house receiving bay. The paste is then moved by hand from the receiving bay to the differential bay by the operator. is carefully weighed, then placed in a loading bucket located inside the differential bay. In times past, it was necessary for the operator to load the rolls by hand. The remote control loading was installed during the 50s and greatly reduced exposure to the operator. The purpose of the differential rolling is to form a colloided sheet and reduce the moisture in the material. The rolls are heated to approximately 210 degrees Fahrenheit. The sheet is automatically cut from the front roll and moved along a chain link conveyor for 45 seconds cooling before leaving the bay. service bay removes the sheet from a transfer bin, places it on a screen table, and brushes away any uncooked particles of paste. In keeping with quality control practices, the sheets are then weighed and placed on a heated table under blankets to await the even speed operation.
angel sheets are folded to form an even speed pad and placed in the even speed transfer bin. The even speed operator takes the pad from the transfer bin inside his bay and inserts the sheet into the even speed machine for further colloiding. In addition to his flame retardant coveralls and conductive shoes, the even speed operator wears a face mask and heavy gloves for additional protection. of this operation, the even speed rolls are placed in a buggy for transfer to the slitter and carpet roll house. Even speed sheets are rolled and placed in a buggy to be pushed to the nearby slitter and carpet roll house. The machine operator removes two of these sheets and places them in position in the machine which cuts or slits these sheets in a uniform strip. Immediately above the sheets and the operator are the red pipes of the deluge system providing instant protection should fire occur. These strips flow into a transfer bin to be pulled out into the carpet roll bay when the machine is stopped. Micro switches ensure that this machine will not be running and if the transfer door is open before the machine is stopped, it will automatically shut the machine off. Carpet roll operators remove strips of powder from the transfer bin and place the strips on the carpet roll table. Samples are taken at this point by quality control personnel for testing. Moisture tests and chemical analysis are made at the area laboratory as well as strand burning tests to evaluate the burning characteristics. Strips are fed by hand to the winder to form a roll the size desired. When the proper size is reached, the completed roll is then removed, string tied, gauged, and placed in a buggy to await transfer to the presses. Because of the hand operations requiring contact with the powder, operators are required to wear gloves in addition to their regular protective gear. The carpet roll buggies are picked up by Jeep and transported to the extrusion press houses.
Upon arrival at the press house, the carpet rolls are placed in a storage cabinet. The press operator then takes three rolls from the cabinet, which is a press charge for one extrusion, and places them on a cart for transfer to the press bay. A micro switch on the safety gate assures the press will not operate while the gate is open. The operator loads the press, then cuts the previous extrusion from the press. Grains are then cut to the desired length by a hand-operated guillotine knife, then are loaded on a push cart. Operators push the cut grains from the press bay and close the safety gate. While the operators mark the grains for identification, another operator returns to the control bay to start the press for the next extrusion. The outside dimension and length of the grains is carefully checked by the quality control personnel as are the controls and gauges in the control room. Cut grains are loaded onto skids and covered with tarpaulin, keeping the powder out of the sunlight while being transported. As skids are loaded on trailers, they are locked and secured. The skids are then transported by jeep train to the end line finishing area. Grains that for one reason or another sometimes fail to pass rigid inspection as to size, shape, or length are reprocessed at the breaker roll to salvage the material and reduce cost of production. The grains are fed into an automatic conveyor at the F-line breaker roll. These grains are broken up and re-rolled on a 36-inch diameter roll heated to 160 degrees and come out as reworked sheets. Sheets from this operation are transported to roll houses to be incorporated with differential sheets in the even speed operation. Some breaker roll sheets are automatically diced at the breaker roll. Diced rework material is reblended with paste at the blender for use at the mechanized roll. At the end of the shift, employees change into their street clothes at the change houses, deposit badges in the badge alley as they leave for home. On this particular day, the bi-monthly plant newspaper was being picked up by the off-going shift. The safety know-how of these individual employees coupled with the technical and engineering know-how built into sunflower processing, has made for another safe work day. Hercules Sunflower employees take pride in producing the quality product, and they are secure in knowing that they can do it safely. Welcome to Enline, the finishing area of the Mark 43 propellant grain for the 2.75-inch folding thin aircraft rocket, commonly known as the Mighty Mouse rocket. Propellant as first seen by production department personnel, is in granulated form called paste. When this material is processed through the F-line roll area, it is changed into elongated cylinders of solid propellant called blank grain. These grains are received at N-line as blank grains for annealing, and then are sawed, end inhibited, doweled, wrapped, trimmed, and end sleeved. Each completed grain becomes the propelling force for the now famous Mighty Mouse rocket. Some of the material used in the finishing processes are plastic end inhibitors, which resemble washers, inhibiting tape used to wrap the periphery of the grain, and end sleeves. Mark 43 grains are delivered from the F-line roll area directly to N-line annealing houses where the first step in the finishing process begins. Annealing is the method by which the grains are heat treated at a specified temperature and length of time to stabilize grain dimensions. 
This stabilization is necessary because the grains have been subjected to high pressures during the extruding process on F lines. Time and temperature charts are placed on a recorder, which provides accurate data throughout the annealing phase. Annealing operators place flow cards on each skin of grains as it arrives. The flow cards are used to record data as the propellant moves through the various processing steps. Operators then move skids into the bays of the annealing house and adjust the automatic heat control. Sample grains are inspected by X-ray or fluoroscope for internal defects. Defects may be small pieces of metal or other foreign matter or air pockets not visible on the surface. This inspection is but another step to assure maximum quality. As a further safeguard, and in addition to regular protective equipment, all personnel working in the X-ray or fluoroscope operations wear dental film badges, which are checked weekly to ensure against exposure to radiation. Following sample testing at internal inspection, the grains are transported by jeep crane to the saw houses. A remote controlled saw machine is used to saw two grains simultaneously to a specified length and angularity of cut. Operating procedures posted in all operating buildings provide detailed information and instruction as to how each operation is to be performed. These procedures are continually checked by production supervision and the safety department personnel. This monitoring assures each operation is performed in the safest possible manner. Sawed grains are transferred immediately into the inhibiting bay where an ethyl cellulose end inhibitor, or washer, is bonded to the end of each grain. The new and improved inhibiting station shown here is but another improvement suggested by N-line personnel. The long-standing Hercules policy of encouraging employees to develop continues to increase efficiency of operation. End inhibiting is a manual operation accomplished by flooding the end surfaces of the grain with Elba solvent, placing an inhibitor in position and visually centering it. Proper installation of these materials is an outstanding example of how the Sunflower Zero Defects program of doing the job right the first time has reduced defects and waste. With quality workmanship being performed by all personnel, the finished grains can be shipped with the assurance that they will properly perform their intended purpose. grains are transferred to rest houses for curing before the next step in the finishing process. The operator receives the skids of grains and enters the time on a flow card. Rest houses are temperature conditioned to eliminate extremes in temperature which could cause either expansion or contraction of the grain. The operator then checks flow cards of skids and forwards those which have been in storage a specified length of time. The grains are placed in rest houses for conditioning following each phase of end line processing. A remote controlled dowel rod machine is used to machine grains to the specified dimensions. The dowel machine is a precision instrument which machines a consistent surface smoothness and diameter. The dowel operator must remain extremely alert as immediate attention to a problem can prevent a dowel rod fire. 
Grains enter and leave the machine bay through a safety bay with synchronized air doors, which provide a fire barrier between the machining bay and the operator. Doweled grains are inspected for diameter and surface finish and conveyed immediately to the multi-wrap bay. Grain diameter, as well as other quality aspects throughout endline, is continually checked by quality control personnel. Multi-wrapping immediately follows the doweling operation. The wrapping process superimposes three layers of ethyl cellulose inhibiting tape on the peripheral surface of the grain. Elba solvent is used to form a complete bond between each strip of tape and the propellant. Multi-wrap tape operators adjust tape angle as necessary to maintain proper geometric spacing of the various layers of tape. This is a very exacting job, as improper spacing of the tape can cause rejection of the grain. Wrapped grains are gauged to ensure against diameter rejects. Grains are then carefully loaded into skids for transfer to rest houses, as these wrapped grains must be cured for a specified period before being sent to the next phase of processing. Properly conditioned wrapped grains are delivered to a trim and sleeve house. An overhang of tape, called a cuff, which was left by the multi-wrap operation, must be trimmed off. The trimming is done by a modified machine lathe. Cuffs are accumulated for disposal, and the trim grains are rolled down a chute into the inspection bay. Each grain is gauged and then visually inspected for bonding and handling defects. Defective grains are removed and the acceptable grains positioned in sleeving carts. All rejected grains are recorded on reject tally sheets so the conditions which caused rejection may be detected and corrected immediately. Loaded carts of acceptable grains are pushed into the sleeving bay. End sleeving is the final assembly process. It is performed manually and is very similar to end inhibitor application. An ethyl cellulose end sleeve is bonded to one predetermined end of each grain. The bonding agent is again Elba solvent. Grain ends and sleeves are carefully soaked prior to application to facilitate a better bond. Following application, the sleeves are repeatedly checked during the drying period to assure proper bonding and centering on the grain. Sleeve grains are then carefully loaded on skids for transfer to rest houses for curing prior to the final inspection. Final inspection is the last step of the finishing process. All grains are visually inspected and gauged for final acceptance. Inspection requirements are highly technical and all operators are extensively trained before qualifying for the inspection decision. An accurate record of all accepted and rejected grains is maintained. Rejected grains, in most instances, can either be recleaned or repaired. Acceptable grains are identified as lotted and assembled for packing. Quality control personnel sample and carefully inspect lotted grains to assure standards of quality required. Although continual sampling and inspection is conducted by quality control personnel throughout the finishing area, the basic responsibility for producing a quality product must be assumed by each individual in the day-to-day -day performance of his particular job. Box pack is the final inline operation. Each grain is individually packed in a tubular container before being placed in cargo containers for shipment. Sample grains are selected from each cargo container for further inspection and ballistics acceptance testing to ensure quality of finished grain. Loaded cargo containers are then placed on trucks for transfer to the magazine area 
where lots are accumulated for off-plant shipment to a rocket loading facility. The responsibilities of magazine area personnel are considerable as they are accountable for careful handling and inventory of accumulated lots during receiving, storage, and shipping. area conducts test firings of Mark 43 grains sampled from each production lot. Each propellant grain is visually inspected and measured prior to motor assembly. The test motors or grains from each lot are divided into four groups for temperature conditioning. They are conditioned at minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit, at minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, at plus 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and at plus 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Following conditioning, the motors are carried to the firing bay, attached to a test stand, and statically fired. Internal pressure and axial thrust data are obtained. These data are statistically evaluated, and ballistic quality characteristics are completed for each lot, and then submitted to the customer for lot acceptance. The Mark 43 grain burns for approximately one and one half seconds, providing an average thrust of 750 pound force. The burnout velocity is approximately 2,300 feet per second. This is comparable to the muzzle velocity of a 30-30 rifle. Shipments of the Mark 43 grains are forwarded by piggyback railroad shipment and by truck. As propellant is shipped, there is the realization that quality people safely producing a quality product for delivery to our fighting men overseas constitutes an unbeatable combination. Is it any wonder that Hercules employees take pride in their accomplishments?